Dear students, welcome to EPG Padashala. In the broad topic, Indian literature, we have been discussing about Indian aesthetics and finance. In this, today we are going to see the interpretation of Rasa Sutra. In the earlier modules, we have seen what is the Rasa Sutra. Today, we are going to understand the different interpretations and amongst them, the first one happens to be Bhatta Lollata's interpretation. Second one, we will know about Rasa Anumiti school of Sri Shankuka. The third one, we will know about Rasa Bhukti school of Bhattanayaka. The fourth one, happens to be Rasa Abhivyakti school of Abhinav Gupta. According to Rasa Sutra of Bharata in his Natya Shastra, of course, this will seem to be a repetition of the Sutra which we came across in the earlier modules. Whenever you talk about Rasa, this repetition can never be avoided because everything is surrounding on this Sutra alone. Therefore, as a reminder, we will have the Sutra, once again, Vibhava, Anubhava, Vyabhichari Samyogat Rasa Nishpatti. How does Rasa arise? It is only through Vibhava, Anubhava and Vyabhichari Bhavas. Regarding Vibhava, Anubhava and Vyabhichari Bhavas, we have already seen in the earlier module, what are Vibhavas, what are Anubhavas, what are Vyabhichari Bhavas, and the summum bonum of all of them happen to be the Stai Bhava. What is the meaning of uh, this uh, sutra? There is accomplishment of rasa through the conjunction of the excitant, that is vibhava, the ensuant, that is anubhava, and the variant, vibhichari bhava. Four interpretations of this assertion have been propounded, and each of these interpretations forms the basis of the distinction of the theory regarding the genesis of rasa. These four interpretations designated as Utpatti Vada, that is what we call it as Rasotpatti. The Vada Vada means that is the arguments based on the particular concept. Rasa Utpatti, that is Rasa Utpatti Vada. Then Anumiti Vada, based on Anumana school. Nyaya school, Anumiti Vada, and then Bhukti Vada, the enjoyment, pleasure. The argument that we are the persons who are enjoyers and the enjoyed. And Abhivyakti Vada, that is based on Vyanjana, the concept of suggestion, were put forward by Bhatta Lollata, that is Utpati Vada was by Bhatta Lollata, and then Anumiti Vada by Sri Shankuka, Bhukti Vada by Bhattanayaka, and Abhivyakti Vada by Abhinav Gupta, respectively. Out of these, the Abhivyakti Vada of Abhinav Gupta is the most comprehensive, which got established later as the norm itself for interpreting Rasa Sutra. In this interpretation is seen the most advanced stage of Indian aesthetic thought. First, we shall see Bhattalolata's interpretation. The first interpretation is by Bhattalolata. According to Mimamsa doctrines, and he represented Rasodpati school. So, in this context, we should know that the interpretations with regard to any ambiguous statements or sutra, the learned persons resort to different schools of uh, interpretation. One happens to be Mimamsa school of interpretation, wherein the principles are there you find the explanations or the interpretations in the Vedic sentences. And then in, with regard to Nyaya Shastra, you find the interpretations based on the reason, reasoning part. Here, Bhattalolata considered the manifestation of Rasa a result of an intensification of Stai Bhava. So, Stai Bhava Rasa Smrataha, there is a statement there. But mere Stai, stai Bhava remains as a bhava only, but when it becomes the raza, 
when it intensifies. That intensification is caused by other causes such as bhava and anubhava. Without their help, the intensification of thai bhava will not occur. Thus, in his theory, regarding thai bhava, we have already discussed. So, regarding thai bhava and rasa, rasa stand in the relation of cause and effect. When his thai is intensified to the highest pitch, it turns into rasa. Highest pitch means that the maturity of the thai bhava. That means the bhava should be very intense and make a person to realize a sort of feeling which feeling is called rasa. The rasa primarily resides in the character and secondarily in the actor who imagines himself to be the character. This is the argument wherein every interpreter is hovering around. Primarily, the rasa resides in the character we said. For example, a person is acting as a character of Rama. Rama in the forest searching for Gita, uh, Sita. Where you should imagine that the character of Rama is primarily undergoing certain feelings, bhavas. Because he has not seen Sita, and he is also having a other. Uh, uh, he is worried about the whereabouts of Sita and the condition of Sita. So all these things are adding to the sorrow, sorrow of Rama. So Rama's character, first of all, has its own feelings. That feelings are being represented by the actor. So once it is being represented, the actor should have the imagination of the character and imagine in such a way that he himself is Rama and then he is in search of Sita and then him should imagine what would be the feeling of him in case he is not uh, uh, able to see Sita. So such uh, expressions are coming out from the actor, that is the bhava. Secondarily, the actor enjoy, imagines himself to be the character. Now, according to Battle Lolata, the feeling, it does not reside in the poet or in the spectator. So, we should know when the depiction is made on the stage, the primary anubhava of the bhava is in the character first, secondly in the actor. When thing, things are going on like this, the argument of Battalolata is it has got nothing to do with the poet or in the spectator. This theory of Battalolata is open to the objection that it fails to explain the emotion that arises in the mind of the spectator of the dramatic representation. Because what he said it is the emotions are only with the main character, the original character and also and the actor. Then what would be the feelings of the spectator or a person who wrote a particular sentence giving rise to the emotion. So there is a chance of the writer also to experience the same feeling while he is writing. Otherwise he cannot portray the feelings. And while the spectator observes and he should also have some feelings because it is being projected before him. The bhavas are projected before him and it has its own empathy on the character. But Battle Lolata has uh, not given a thought to it, rather he has not uh, dilated down much on that. Therefore, there is an objection on it. According to it, the sentiment is generated in the personated character and secondarily recognized in the personating actor. With that, he has stopped. There is still some more to be discussed, which Battle Lolata has uh, coolly disposed of. The second Interpretation is put forward by Sri Shabkuka. According to his doctrine, this is Rasa Anumiti school, you can say. The Anumiti Vada or the argument based on Anumana of Sri Shankuka was based on the premise for any Anumana you should have a premise. In the logical Shastra, that is Nyaya Shastra, you should have a premise and that premise 
is on the premise that rasa is process of logical inference see if you are to conceive something it is logical inference you let infer that the ultimately the the rasa is this the essence is this the experience what type of experience it is aesthetic experience is like this like that you let have a premise where the spectator infers rasa when the vibhavas etc are placed before him so an actor on the stage is exhibiting his bhavas and the spectator infers the rasa so by observing the vibhavas and bhavas etc projected by the actor he is experiencing the rasa so also in the case of the books poetry when it is written the poet has got his own feelings before writing the rather um, before writing the sentences in order to give rise to the bhavas in the same way the reader who is reading the text written by the author has got his own perception of the bhavas and the experience of the rasa sri shankuka interpreted that rasa originates by animiti that's what we have been in france according to him art cannot be an ordinary imitation but a kind of an indirect inference when some art or rather some activities are projected on the stage it is not an ordinary imitation that means see if it is ordinarily imitated people cannot have the same empathy of the character he should have added some more to give rise to the bhava that is what is happen- happening in the dramas even in day to day depictions this is with regard to the um, now nowadays we can call it in the cinema also so even the ordinary character if it acts it as a yatartha we say call it so the natural action may not appeal but there should be something added more than that it need not be over action but there should be action that gives that uh, makes the audience to understand that this is being projected this particular bhava is being projected so hence this thai bhava of the character which is inferred by the actor is called rasa because that sai bhava he has to create because he is being an actor his natural sai bhava may be different but when he comes on the stage he has to develop a sort of sai bhava within himself suitable to the character and then he must project it which will be released as the rasa by the audience but the sai bhava cannot be imitated because an actor does not himself experience the pain of the character that means what wholly the sai bhava cannot be projected by the actor sometimes it may be different also we do not know how the original character experienced the sai bhava and the projection may be a little different sometimes it may be um, uh, over projection so what he, he says is whatever may be the projection part of it the inference part of the reader or the spectator as in the case of the dramas is very very important according to him there is a distance between the two what to the actor and the character the actor must create by his ability a mental state in order to act on the stage thus sri shankuka interprets the rasa sutra to mean that the basic mental state inferred from vibhavas and anubhavas are to be considered now we will move on to the spectator as regards uh, um, the sri shankuka theory of rasa the means of knowledge is perception there is a pratyaksha pramana we call it in nyaya shastra knowledge must be transformed into inference inference is nothing but a reasonable guess we also find the notion of production that what the actor reproduces has to be cognized this is due to the distance of the spectator the objective cognition has to become a part of spectator's consciousness it cannot be directly perceived either through language 
or movement. Sri Shankuka put the stress on the role of the spectator. As he is trained in Nyaya school, he viewed Rasa not from the perspective of the production of the aesthetic subject, but rather the matter out of which the aesthetic experience comes. The emotions of the hero in ordinary life are manifested by causes, bodily effects and accompanying mental states and these, when imitated by the actor, become vibhavas and such. The emotion that the audience is but a reflex, anukara, that is only the imitation of the real emotional mood, sthai bhava, of the characters and is called by a different name, namely Raza. That is his contention. Abhida is the commonly accepted power of denotation or indication. And Bhavagatva, peculiar to the poetic language, is the power of generalization through which the Vibhavas and so forth are grasped in a universal way without any individual specific properties. So, he is introducing this Bhavagatva and Abhida. Of course, it, is, it appears to be a far-fetched idea to be related to this Raza. This generalization is called Sadharani Karna. Through the third function, Bojagatva, the Stai Bhava, thus generalized is enjoyed. That is what is his contention. How? Through an exuberance of Sattva Guna over and above, Rajas and Tamas, in the mind of the spectator, which makes the experience always pleasurable. The objection against this view is that inference is a purely intellectual process and hence cannot account for the highly complex emotional phenomena involved in Raza. You must know, when we are talking about the intellectual process, this process of understanding is through brain. And the enjoyment of aesthetic pleasure is through heart. So there should be some distinction between these two, which he has not cleared it off. Therefore, the objection stands as it is. Bhattanayaka critiqued the formalist view by focusing on the spectator's subjective experience while engaging with literary work. So, he propounded the Rasa Bhukti school, that is the third interpretation by Bhattanayaka based on Sabdavritti. The theory of Bhattanayaka was an important one on both these and paved the way for the more competent theory of Abhinavagupta. So, if Abhinavagupta has to conceive an idea, Bhattanayaka has given the idea first. In Bhattanayaka's opinion, Rasa is neither produced nor manifested. At one stroke, he says, Rasa is not produced or it is not manifested. Then what? If Baba is evoked as it is, none would experience pleasure from such Rasas as Karuna or Bhayanaka. So, the Baba alone, a very mere bhava cannot give rise to rasas and he quotes these two rasas, karuna and bhayanaka. The experience would certainly be distasteful even if it is projected. He postulated three functions of words namely abhida, bhavagatva and bhotagatva. This theory of Bhattanayaka appears to have been well received at the time and it was also in conflict with the dvani theory. Hence, Abhinavagupta takes great pains to refute this and deals with it at length. Nevertheless, Abhinavagupta too benefited greatly there from and his own interpretation of the Rasa Sutra. He incorporates the salient features of Bhattanayaka's interpretation too. According to Bhattanayaka, Rasa is not cognized, inferred or generated or manifested either unconcernedly as not concerning the spectator at all as held by Bhattarolata or as subsisting in the spectator himself, that is released by him as held by Sri Shankuka. What happens is that in poetry and drama, words are endowed with a peculiar potency distinct from direct denotation and indirect indication, which tends to generalize the excitance of Bhava, insurance Anubhava and variance of Vijari, and thereby presents to consciousness the latent emotion which thereupon comes to be released by a process of delectation abounding in enlightenment and bliss due to the abundance of the quality of harmony. So, it is a theory of harmony we can say.
His school is Rasa Abhivakti Vada, the fourth interpretation by Abhinav Gupta based on Vinjanavritti. Following the Alankarikas, such as Anandavardhana. So, it is, we can even say that it is Alankarika school of uh, interpretation. Abhinav Gupta differs from Bhattanayaka on the point that word possesses two forms called Bhavakatva and Bhojakatva. These two are rejected by Abhinav Gupta on the ground that there is no valid authority for accepting them as different functions. What is Bhojakatva? What is Bhavakatva? He is arguing in a different way, making a great question on that. His contention is that Bhattanayaka's Bhavagatva is not different from Venjana Vritti, that is suggestion. When you say Bhavagatva, that is suggestion only. Then why do you give a different name for it? That is his argument. The process of generalization is accomplished through the suggestive function in poetry and hence there is no need to postulate another. Regarding the other function, Bhojagatva of Bhattanayaka, Abhinav Gupta contends that this is none other than Rasa Pratiti, the enjoyment of Rasa. To call it Bhojagatva is to give it a different name unnecessarily. According to Abhinav, the responsive reader or a spectator in the case of a drama has within him latent impressions of emotions experienced previously. Otherwise, one cannot have the emotions must have been experienced earlier. Then only the same thing will get repeated and can have the either the enjoyment or the experience of the feeling. These are known as Purva Vasana. So either in the previous birth or in the early days of his life. The Sai Bhavas lie dormant in the form of Vasana. Vasana means impressions, the latent impressions. When he reads or witnesses a clear representation of appropriate Vibhavas, Anubhavas and Sanchari Bhavas, these latent impressions are evoked and developed to such a pitch that they are realized in their universal form that is devoid of personal or individual qualities that is Sadharani Karana. In this impersonalized state, the feelings are always pleasurable and are enjoyed in the form of Rasa. That is impersonalized state means that it is not no way, it is not uh, any way connected with the the spectator or the reader. He is only reading and trying to understand, trying to experience also the feelings, that's all. It is no way directly connected to him. So that's why we say it is the impersonalized state. Through an exuberance of Sattva Guna, Rasa is suggested, sense and manifests itself through a process of suggestion. So he drags this interpretation towards the suggestive theory of Andhavardhana. That's why we said earlier that he follows the Alankara school while interpreting Rasa Sutra. So the process of suggestion, how it comes through instruments of suggestion being Vibhavas, Anubhavas, etc. So with regard to the basic structure of the Sutra of Bharata, everyone is rolling around and no one can say anything against the Vibhavas and Anubhavas etc. stated by Bharata. The difference of opinion is only in the valuation and observation of the Vibhavas that are playing over the character or the actor or in the spectator or the reader. The term Nishpati in Bharata is interpreted as Abhivyakti suggestion. So, it appears to be a different name given to Nishpati. But yet, the Abhivyakti is a term which relates the same Nishpati towards the suggestive element of the Rasa. Thus, Rasa is always suggested. Abhinav Gupta says that according to Bhattanayaka, Rasa is neither perceived nor produced nor manifested. The key to his concept is Bhavana, a particular combination of determinants and consequence. So, there is a ordinary saying also in life, Yad Bhavi Tad Bhavatu. So the Bhavana is important, a particular combination of determinants and consequence. Rasa is inherent in the text. It matures into art, more objectified experience. In drama, the spectator's experience is internal. Rasa occurs when the spectator becomes one with that 
with what he is watching so the concentration and the feeling of fondness and the empathy of the reader or the spectator with the, either the text or the dramatic representation there is a difference between rasabukti and rasa abhivyakti the difference between the fourth and the third explanation that is the rasa bhukti and rasa abhivyakti lies in the fact that according to the third there is relishing of the emotion which is not present in the spectator's mind while according to the fourth it is present in his mind in the form of predisposition the propriety of this explanation is further strengthened by the fact that the spectator whose mind is free from such predisposition does not feel the rasa so one should have already have some sort of uh, impressions about the feelings of the rasa then only he can enjoy it otherwise it will be strange to him thus we have come across various interpretations of rasa by different uh, poeticians and it is up to us to decide how the rasa could be relished by an individual the theories are only for the sake of a reasonable way of approaching the aesthetics and the realization of rasa there may be differences in the experience of rasa depending upon the individuals so we cannot come to a conclusion that this particular theory alone is right and this is not therefore all the four theories are playing the vital part in the realization of rasa thank you